Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be flipping through my second sketchbook here. It's the same exact size as my first one. It's 9 by 12 inches. There's 97 completed pages in here so I managed to get through it without ripping out as many pages as I did in the first one. And it also took me considerably less time as we'll see here. So it took me about 11 months, yeah, just around 11 months from February 20th of this year to December 15th. And this one, to me, definitely has a different vibe than the first one. I'd say it's less colorful. It's a little more experimental. And throughout the process of making this, I was going through a lot of emotional times and, you know, things, I guess, related to mental health. This one, I really felt stressed out a lot of the time, so I didn't approach it with as many, like, planned out ideas. I was really just using the art as therapy as a way to take my mind off of problems and just kind of relax. So, anyway, I could talk about it all day, but it's best to just flip through it. So here's the first page. I actually made a video on this one. This is called Apocalypse Wave. Um, this one's acrylic paint. It's just kind of messing around with different colors and everything. And actually, you could look at it either way. I kind of like having it vertically. But, you know, it's just kind of an abstract thing. Um... So the next page, got this one. This was done with ballpoint pens. It was just kind of a frenzy doodle type thing. Um, lots of little details in there to look at. Sometimes I like doing things like this, just not a whole lot of thought going into it as far as like a, a plan or anything. Here's another one. This is actually my dog, Coco. I was trying to draw my dog. <laughs> I think my dog was like taking a shit right here. Um, but, and then I tried to, I tried to draw my dog when she was actually looking towards me and I messed up her face because I think she like ran away. Like she only looked at me for like a second and then she ran away so I lost my reference. So then I just ended up turning her into like a demon looking creature. The whole drawing just kind of went into, you know, demented uh, nightmare territory. So there's that. This is, I mean, this is pretty simple. Just a guy confronting a huge troll, you know, trying to walk down, walk down the road and there's a troll in the way. Here, this is just kind of abstract doodling with a kind of minimal color palette, I guess. And <clears throat> this one, this is, you know, one of the more colorful pages in the sketchbook. And it was just kind of representing how I was feeling at the time. I felt like I was stuck and just pinned down, like, in my life and in this dreary kind of wasteland area. But I, I felt like there was just this very thin tendril that was like I was hanging on to hope or possibility. You know, this side's like what I felt my reality was. And then over here's like what I thought my life could be. That's just the place I was at at the time. It's funny because in my first sketchbook tour, I mentioned that I was going through like a dark time because I quit my job and... Uh, I started working night shift and it was like kind of tough to deal with. And in that, in that video, I was like, oh, I'm, a, I'm okay now. You know, I, I think I'm doing better, but actually it turns out that like shortly thereafter, I continued to like feel worse and worse. And that's what was happening while I was doing these drawings here. Got 
got this. This was um, using some colored paper mate ballpoint pens. And I just sketched this hand really quick without a reference. Very loose kind of um, sketching going on here. But you can definitely tell it's a hand. Doesn't look too bad, I don't think. And here's another kind of... <laughs> This is kind of, you know, this is kind of like some emo shit right here. I was trying to experiment with different, um, different mediums. So I got some watercolors. And since I was feeling so horrible at the time, of course, I drew like a symbolic heart just freezing, cold, laying in snow in the middle of the tundra. This one, again, just experimenting with gouache, which is, for those of you that may not know, gouache is basically a type of paint that is kind of like a mix between acrylic paint and watercolor. You can use it like watercolor and kind of, uh, you know, water it down and it maintains the color without kind of um, breaking apart like acrylic does. So I was just messing around with different brushes and different colors and stuff. This isn't, you know, it's not really representing anything. Uh, here I'm using gouache again, and these are just some weird looking flowers. Yeah, this is just some doodles with, well actually I have the pens right here that I used. So what are the, these are Energels, Pentel Energels. I like these pens, but I don't use them too often. You know, it's not often that I'll need like a specific blue pen or purple pen, but they're good for doodling with. And here is a picture of an elephant I did. This is from a reference, and I like how this one turned out. Uh, the elephant itself is graphite, and then I basically did the background with alcohol markers. Um, here's just another kind of wild doodle type thing. Um, here I was... I had just got some artist tape. I just laid it out in this kind of pattern and then painted over it. And it kind of split split the picture into these different little sections. So. And here, once again, it seems like every page I was like trying something radically different and just throwing things at the wall and seeing what stuck. Um, at this point, I had bought like a big pack of uh, colorful cardstock, and so I just tried uh, cutting out different shapes and seeing what I could come up with. And I ended up with this weird looking face. Just looks kind of goofy. Uh, here's a woman who has decapitated herself and like that's her head but she's like holding her own head I guess while she's doing like some kind of dance I don't know this is the kind of stuff I come up with uh, here's another one where I just became strangely obsessed with the word singular and just tried drawing it in different directions, different kind of fonts and stuff. And then I just cut out some more weird shapes and kind of arranged them on the page in a way that I thought looked kind of cool. So there's that one. Um, every now and then I'll decide I want to try to draw faces. I'll be like, oh yeah, I know how to draw faces. Come on, please, please. I can draw faces. And then I start to draw and I'm like, holy shit. 
I, I always realize that I really need to either practice more or use a reference. Like, look here, I'm like, find references. Um, anyway, so that's that. Here's another one, another kind of um, abstract type thing. This looks like an orange slice to me. I mean, the general idea is there's like a pipeline of all these colors and then it's like shooting out it's like combining them and like shooting them out into the void i guess is kind of what i was going for but this is i bought a book of it's photographs of people doing different facial expressions and stuff and it had a woman who was like blowing a kiss so I drew her out with a pencil and then I just kind of glued these uh, pieces of cardstock on just trying to accent certain areas. And it kind of looks, because I put like the thumb and the middle finger, it looks like she's flicking a bird, but she's actually like blowing a kiss. It's just kind of hard to tell. This was some planning I was doing for... A larger piece that I never ended up doing called Uncle Sam's Last Rites. I guess it was kind of gonna be kind of like a symbolic type thing like Uncle Sam's on his deathbed. You have Lady Liberty at the bedside like crying and then you have this priest figure that's like he's wearing a jacket. You can't see it here but he'd be wearing like this really finely embroidered jacket with like dollar signs all over it and he's like reading uncle sam his last rites but on the book which i guess would be a bible if it was real or something if it was really last rites on the bible it'd just be like completely blank or there'd just be like money like a like a bank ledger or something it, there's a lot of symbolism going on in this thing that i thought would be like a cool concept and then, like, outside the window of the hospital, it's, like, complete chaos, like an apocalyptic scene with, like, nukes going off in the background. So, yeah, this page and this page, I was just, like, trying to work out specific things that I do with that picture, but I never ended up doing it. Here's another one that's that was just me really drawing how I felt at the time at my desk, just feeling like crap. I don't know. Yeah, if I, I guess if I had to pick a low point as far as how I felt, this would be the low point of my year, I guess, or at least of where I was at that point in time. Anyway, so there's that. Here's just... A cyclops I did a psych uh, this one's called vampiric cyclops and yeah it's just a creature this is with gouache and I really like the different colors you can get with gouache I, I want to start using it more often this is another just pen and marker sketch a lot, a lot of times what would happen with these is I just start drawing something. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to sit down. I want to draw something. And I'd start drawing. And then I'd start to feel like, oh, this is turning out like crap. So I'd try to find a way to like salvage the drawing or at least try to make it look more purposeful. Yeah, this is back. This is in my backyard. We've got a basketball hoop. So I was kind of sitting under it, looking upward into the trees, and I did this with pencil, uh, ballpoint pen, and marker. And I, I like how this, it's kind of stylized a little bit. It's very messy as far as all the individual lines and everything, but it gives it a certain look, I think. And yeah. Just some marker doodles. This page is just some more doodling. 
this um, this box right here, this is actually from the cover of a ZZ Top album. I'm not, I don't remember which one. Um, and th this face, I don't think... I'm trying to remember if I had a reference for her. I might have, because she actually didn't look too bad. Just kind of a mishmash of things. Um, this one, it's pretty self-explanatory. So there's a shell, and then this is my version of a mermaid, which definitely doesn't look beautiful or, you know, this isn't your Disney version of the Little Mermaid, okay? This is like a mermaid from a horror movie or something, like a sci-fi thriller. I just really like how this turned out. I like the color palette. I like the creepy fish kind of face. I like the gills. I like the saggy titties on this thing. I like everything about it. Here I was just out on my front porch or like out in my driveway and this is the front of my wife's car. I just kind of sketched it out real quick with some ballpoint pens. So here I did a acrylic painting of, it's basically like an eyeball, but it's also like a clock with just random things in place of the numbers that you would usually see. So, you know, it's like an 8, a smiley face, 21 to the X power, 6.6. .6. This one's actually called Nonsense Clock, because that's literally what it is. Here's another painting. This one's with gouache, and I really like how this turned out. Um, I think I, I was going through a little bit of an eye phase or something, because this I started drawing this, and I don't think it was supposed to be an eye, but it's just one of those things that as the painting went on, I was like, I think I started drawing like an eyebrow above it, and I was like, oh, this is definitely an eye. So, and it looks like maybe an alien or creature, some like a fantasy creature, I don't know. So this is gouache and pencil, and it's just a girl kind of sitting out in a wasteland. This one I like too. I, I was using, it's got a very kind of grungy feel to it because I was using like leftover paints from some previous paintings. So it has a lot of like really just muddy kind of gray, and then I was just kind of doing really random scribbles um, just to suggest things off in the distance. This is another one of my favorites. Not so much the figures, um, these two aliens here, um, but just the perspective. Um, I was really trying to like capture the feeling of being kind of in like a claustrophobic alleyway. I didn't want to use too many different colors, um, but I tried to use like darker colors in the foreground and then try to lighten it up in the distance and you kind of see this um, cityscape way in the background. I'm really trying to develop my skills in like painting with detail because I remember trying to do these aliens and every time I try to paint some detail I just make like a huge blotchy mark and kind of and I'd have to go back and try to fix it again and again. And so that's still something I'm working on. <laughs> so this page is super basic. Um, I did this on April 3rd, 2022. And I just drew this kind of weird squiggly border and then did 4-3-2022. Like, four dots, three dots, 22 dots. You know, nothing. I was definitely lacking inspiration that day, that's for sure. Um, another kind of abstract thing. I like, I like this page. Um, I like incorporating words and kind of different stylized things. Really, 
really I'll start off in, in one area of the picture and kind of as I go along, one section will start to influence the next section. I might have been doing these scribbles and then I'm like, oh, what if I connect these scribbles to the letters and then oh what if there's like a spotlight coming down and it like illuminates the the o in this word and then i'll be like oh what if there's like another spotlight coming from this side but it's like made out of lines and what if i do a dot over here and then you know it's just i try to just do a lot of random things and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but I do like how this page turned out. So here's basically an alien uh, person in profile. In my last sketchbook, I did several pages where I'd cut part of the page out and then the page underneath would like reveal something different. So I did a similar thing here where I just ripped out this page to kind of frame the face and then underneath I did this design. This is two different shades of that same cardstock that I used earlier in the sketchbook but I wanted to go for kind of like the inside of a geode or something like that with lots of spiky crystals coming in at different angles and then around the edges I did like a more kind of oozing uh, organic kind of feel with my brush pen. So I, I like how this one turned out and I was able to achieve a good amount of detail uh, on this border section. And here is just some planning I was doing for the game that I've been working on on and off for like three years now. Just some UI type things like different menus and like what I wanted the the map, the galaxy map to look like. So at this point, this was on April 9th, I had actually gone to my doctor around this time just for like a insulin prescription because uh, I'm diabetic. And they had me do this questionnaire where they're asking me all these questions. You know, they ask you like, oh, are you feeling sad? Are you feeling hopeless? And at that time I was, so I was like, yes, all the time. And anyway, so they prescribed me an antidepressant, which I started taking around this time. And I didn't end up drawing anything else for like a whole month. So this was on April the 9th. And this page here was like a month later. I don't know if um, it was the medicine for sure, but it really felt like my creativity just kind of hit a, hit a wall, uh, at least for the first month, you know, when I started taking it. But then it came back and it felt like I kind of entered a new phase. So here's like the first art that I did after... I started taking my medicine, my medication. You got like an eyeball growing on a vine and to me kind of looks like an iceberg or something, like an like an icy scene, I don't know. Around this time I was really into using limited color palettes just cuz I felt it really simplified things and I could focus more on what I was actually drawing if I didn't have to worry so much about particular colors. So I'd go and pick out like three colors. Here I've got like a dark blue, a pink, and a red. And I just do the whole picture with that. And this was something kind of abstract that ended up turning into this picture of like these strange figures kind of walking down a road or something in the in this weird geometric world. I like this one a lot. Here's another one that's three different colors that I did and this one's called Wednesday Morning Scorpion because it was a Wednesday morning when I did it and it kind of reminded me of a scorpion with the tail, like a spiky tail and like pinchers. 
this one started out as a doodle page. I saw some lizards. I was doing this outside and I saw some lizards crawling around. So I started doodling these lizards from different angles and I wasn't happy with how it was turning out and then I just started writing like I guess it's a poem basically and it's just you know sometimes that's what happens you know I, I'll go in thinking oh I'm just gonna draw figure out something to draw in it and my creativity ends up leading me in a different direction but I like having a nice variety in my sketchbook so that works out And here's another two pages that work kind of similarly to the blue alien that we saw a few pages back. This guy's like a some kind of skeletal demon, uh, which I, I'm not usually one to draw skeletal demons, but, you know, I think he looks pretty cool. And then underneath, I did another one of these kind of uh, collages or... I'm not sure what you would call it, but I used the cardstock again, the heavy paper, and kind of made another crystal looking thing going on here with, you know, and I did the same thing with the brush pen and kind of did these uh, swirls and stuff. Yeah, same kind of effect, just a, just a different color scheme and stuff. So this one, this drawing happened around the time of that school shooting in Texas, and I remember I was drawing these doodles with my, with my pen, and I didn't draw for very long before I was like, I'm just not into this, like, the doodle, I was just kind of getting bored of it because I was like wow this is a lot of space to fill with just these kind of random doodles so I took out my my red gouache paint and I just kind of went crazy over the page you know I was just kind of scraping it around just kind of using the palette knife and just making these visceral looking strokes and everything these are like fingerprints too over here and then by the end of it, I was like, man, this looks like a bloodbath. Like, and I kind of made the connection then maybe like subconsciously I was like reacting to, to the stuff that I'd been seeing on the news and stuff about, uh, the school shooting. So then I just put why, you know, cause that's always what I think. Like, why does this keep happening? So yeah, that's how this came about. Um, and then I have this one. Again, I'm using gouache, but this one is a little bit more random and just kind of like an abstract thing. Here's something that's a little more detailed than the previous pages, but it, I feel like it's kind of in the same vein where I'm kind of incorporating different words, different details, textures, um kind of fonts, I guess, and just trying to synthesize it all into something that looks good as a, as a composition. This pink squiggle here was using a metallic watercolor as well as um, the purple here. So these next two pages, I had bought a big pack of Ohuhu markers, which they're alcohol markers. They're like my favorite markers that I use all the time. And I wanted a way to swatch them so I'd know like which colors were which. So that's what I did here. I tried to like color coordinate them into uh, groups. And same with this page here. Um, on this page, I started drawing these... Um, basically like alien looking plants. I drew this one first. This one's my favorite. And I drew this one and then I drew this one. 
And this one I don't really like. I just think it looks lumpy and kind of weird. I was going for something like an alien watermelon that's like being pumped with some kind of nutrients or something. But this one's like a little overdone, I think. Like I like the simplicity of this one. And I don't know. I feel like they got worse as they as I went along. I was looking at this because I, I look at other artists' YouTube sometimes. And a lot of them will sell, like, sticker sets. And I was thinking, you know what? If I could do, like, a sticker set of, like, alien-looking plants, that'd be kind of cool. Because I was, I was imagining this one as a sticker, and I thought that would be really cool. But anyway, so just some alien plants. This one was just a really quick thing I did with some really shitty acrylic paints. Like, these paints were garbage. I just stopped giving a crap about the page like halfway through it, just started scraping the paint off, just slathering it on in other areas. And then this whole section here uh, was painted over, but before it dried I took a paper towel and like rubbed the paint off and it started to look like a road, like a section of pavement. So I just drew this little dotted line in pink and then it just became like a highway through the void or something. This was with gouache. I do remember doing this, um, but <laughs> yeah, I don't have much to say about this one. This is another one of my favorites in this sketchbook. This one's done with alcohol marker and yeah, it just has a lot of cool little details that I like. And it just goes to show how inspiration kind of works, you know. Like, I, I did this, and I remember at the time feeling like, wow, wow, what, a, what an achievement you've done. What a true artistic genius you are. And then, like, the next day, I, I do something like this, and I just feel, not that this is, like, you know, my crowning jewel or anything, but... Sometimes you just got to work through the kind of bland patches and you'll eventually, you know, some moments of brilliance will come through or some moments of inspiration. And <laughs> anyway, so again, just some random stuff. divulge nothing. I guess that's just what was on my mind at the time. Extreme secrecy. This one, not too much to say about it. I started out with this little factory. Again, it's like I'd get into this a situation where I'd try to draw something that was very detailed and had a lot going on. You know, I think probably at the time I was thinking, oh, this could be like this huge industrial complex with a lot of like interlocking machinery and and stuff. And then like around this point, I just got bored and I was just like, fuck it. And I just made this pipe go off and and in like a weird direction. And then this side just turns into like an abstract piece. Just a similar thing to a lot of the pages in the sketchbook. Um, here, just messing around with shapes, which is like what I like to do a lot. Just trying different combinations of shapes, having the shapes start out one size and then kind of flow. This right here is like one of my favorite pages. The combination of this page here and the page behind it. Because it looks like... First of all, this looks like a whale, and I think I cut it out. I think there was more going on, and then I kind of realized, hey, this looks like an eyeball, and if I cut this the right way, I can make this look like the head of a whale. So that's what I did, and I don't know. I just, I think this page works pretty well, even though it's a lot of different colors and there's a lot of stuff going on. And then behind it, the name of this page is Coagulated Swell, 
and it, it basically kind of looks like a glistening wave of blood just washing over something and there's some weird stuff going on over here. This one actually seems like it could be related to the first page here in a way because they're both like waves of some kind and they're both with acrylic paint. I don't know I feel like these these two pages could be like part of a series here but anyway Yeah, this, this page is called Ruby Tooth, because he's got like a tooth, instead of a gold tooth, it's like encased in ruby or something. And <clears throat> again, I, I feel like the I was kind of on a roll going from this last page to this one. This is with a pretty simple color palette. I think I had like six or seven different colors. And I just did this kind of, this is like, kind of like a halo ring, or like, you know, those space stations you see in uh, science fiction movies that are like giant rings in space that spin to like create gravity. And I just had this idea that maybe one got weird growths on it, you know, it's got like a brain with crystals and eyeballs and creepy hands and tentacles and stuff and... I think this page turned out pretty good. I'm happy with it. <clears throat> um, this is a graphite and marker drawing that I did. And I don't, it's kind of weird because I don't use graphite a lot, but every time I do use it, I always have so much fun because you can do so much detail with pencil. You can, you can, you know, shade, you can, you can do like blending, uh, you can do, and that's what I was trying to do here is just kind of do a lot of different textures, a lot of different kind of fine details and it's basically like an alien planet where there's these weird plants and just weird stuff going on i don't know <laughs> me trying me trying to explain my creations it is what it is but yeah i, I drew this uh this plant that can like eat eat things and then it has like a, a little stomach sack so there's like a dragonfly um, sitting in there getting digested. Uh, here's another kind of geometric abstract type thing just using a, a limited color palette and I like this one. It has a vibe to it. I'm not sure what the vibe is but it's cool, I think. Now this page, these two pages, I did, I started doing this painting really using like the most random collection of colors. You know, I had like a bright, obnoxious orange, pink, purple, and yellow, and like this blue which shouldn't really work together in any circumstances and to top it all off i drew this guy he has like a weird androgynous look because he has these super feminine eyes but he also kind of looks like mr clean so i drew this i cut around it and then i did the thing that i do a lot where the next page kind of reveals something completely different and it has the same kind of character. He Well, he looks a little different. He just looks very aghast. And I did a lot of super detailed swirls in this area. That's like one of my favorite things to do is these little, these little detailed swirls.
it truly is not much of substance on this page. Okay, so at this point in the sketchbook, I'm kind of entering what is my watercolor phase, I guess, because I got this set of Japanese watercolors, so I became kind of obsessed with the watercolor, and this is the first thing I did with those. Um, just kind of almost like a medieval looking thing, looking out into a landscape. And it's simple, but I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, here I'm using the watercolors again. A lot of these pages coming up, in including this one, I'm just really trying to get a handle on how the watercolor works, how it's reacting to the paper, how it behaves when you lay it down. Um... And it, it turns out that this paper really isn't great for watercolor. It just doesn't hold it very well. So you'll end up getting like these blotchy areas and it kind of warps the paper. But it's all part of the learning process. Um, again, another untitled page. This was just, you know, messing around with watercolors again. Uh, this one, I put so much watercolor that it actually started to, like, destroy the paper. Like, this part right here, and also right here, this is almost completely worn through. And so, I ended up going over this section here with acrylic paint just, just to cover it up and, and make it look not as bad. But... I don't know what this is. Don't ask me what it is. It's just, it looks like something that might exist in like some kind of fantasy realm. Um, my wife said it looked like a towering vagina. I, I can neither confirm nor deny uh, if that's the case, but I'll leave that up to you. So here I just wanted to do something a little different. Basically I drew these two characters. This one's like a, a mage or something, but it's also like a worm creature that gets around on like a spring-loaded tail. So they kind of just bounce around, but he's got like a staff. I don't know. And then this guy's like a tough walrus. He looks like a bodyguard kind of, but he's like a walrus guy. Anyway, so this one is called Ostinato, and Ostinato is basically a musical term that refers to like a rhythmic passage that is repeated uh, over and over again throughout a piece of music. And so with this drawing, basically everything is a repeating pattern, except for a few of these things around the edges. But like, here's the pattern. One, two, three, then a line, then one, two, then a line. Or three lines in a square, two lines in a square. You know, three circles in a line, two circles in a line. So everything in this drawing uses that pattern and I didn't intend to make a face but as I was doing it it started to look more and more like a guy wearing glasses so I kind of leaned into that. Uh, this is just another poem that I ended up doing and I kind of just had this muted looking kind of background that I wrote the poem on top of. And so this one, I basically was just using primary colors of uh, watercolor, um, yellow, red, and blue, just kind of splashing it on the page in different areas. 
Then I went on top of it with some micron pens and kind of added all these little details and it kind of looked like a rat to me. And I really like this one. This is one of my favorites out of the whole sketchbook. Once again, I tried doodling faces, and I was like, oh yeah, the, it's not that easy, you know, especially when you just go in with pen and try to just draw from your imagination. But that's pretty much what this page was, just some doodles. Um, here, I just continued using watercolor. Um, just trying to use different brushes, blending. Yeah, I did, I did like several drawings in the same kind of style, especially towards the end here of the sketchbook. This one's another one of my favorites. I just really like how it turned out. You know, this is one where I actually went in to the drawing with an idea of this kind of alien pod that was just kind of suspended from the ceiling by all this machinery. So I drew a pretty detailed sketch with all these mechanical elements and these things like injecting different serums into it. I was really trying to use the watercolor more uh, like it's supposed to be used, where you'll lay down lighter colors first and then kind of layer on top of it. And I, I really like how the little alien pod turned out. And then I just did a really simple background. I also used some metallic watercolors in certain sections like this uh, tubing here and some of the uh, accents on the mechanical bits, as well as this little grate down here that's catching all the dripping juices. Yeah, this is another another one just similar to what I had been doing, um, just trying to combine watercolor and kind of detailed pen marks and different patterns. I think this was probably the most successful of the ones that I did in that style. So here's a scene from my backyard. There's a picture in my first sketchbook that's of this exact same uh, scene, but this time, instead of markers, I used watercolor. I had my wife's Bluetooth speaker out, kind of listening to music while I was drawing, so that's what that is. And it's actually incomplete, because what happened is my wife, she decided she wanted to grill some stuff, so she took the grill and kind of like dragged it away and started grilling which it was fine. We got to eat some tasty food, but at that point I was like, well, my reference is kind of lost, so I didn't want to keep going, and the, the background here was left out too. But overall, it looks pretty good, I think. This is another one of the untitled pieces that I have. You know, it's really just messing around with paints. But I was really interested in what would happen if I left a lot of paint on the page. So there's portions of this where the paint is like really thick and you can really feel the texture, especially like down here, just like really thick ridges and stuff. And then at other parts, there's very uh, smooth gradients and stuff. I was just messing around with the paint to see how it would behave really. So this is a collage that I did using words and stuff that were cut out of some People magazines that I had laying around. Um, I'm not, I'm not like totally giving up on collages, but I definitely want to try to put more thought into it next time. And here's the last of of that kind of style that I was talking about where I just kind of went crazy with the watercolor. And this one I tried to use a more limited color palette. So it was actually only two 
No, it was three different colors. It was this bright kind of magenta, uh, this yellow color, and this blue. And then all the green tones you see were just a mixture of these two colors. Really, I was trying to see like how much color variation I could get with only those three colors. Here's my rendition of She-Hulk. Um, you know, there was the series that came out recently. And every time I see the She-Hulk, I just think, well, that just looks like a slightly larger woman that's green. You know, I wanted my She-Hulk to look hulkier. So I found a reference photo of like a female bodybuilder. Or she might have been some other kind of athlete, but she was super ripped. And I basically used her picture for this and just turned her green. So this is my version of the She-Hulk. I'm not super happy with the face. Her eyes are a little mismatched and stuff, but, it, you know, it got the job done. And also, if you're wondering why her boobs are hanging out, I just feel like it's not realistic that whenever the Hulk transforms, his shirt always rips off, but whenever She-Hulk transforms, her shirt stays on. I don't know. Free the nipple! <laughs> yeah, so here's another weird one that I did. This little triangular uh, piece of face here was drawn without a reference, but the mouth and this eye I did use a reference for. Yeah, basically I just used like kind of a dotted style. That's what I did for this one. I noticed that if you flip it, if you flip it like this, I just find this like way more disturbing because then it starts to look like an actual face. Whereas if you have it diagonally, it doesn't give me the creeps as much as if I turn it this way. Let me know what you guys think. This kind of has some bizarro world creepy vibes. This way, not as bad, I think. But, yep. So this one here is just another kind of abstract design type thing. Um, I really like how this came out. You know, this layer, the top layer is like these kind of strangely shaped mechanisms and stuff. And then the yellow layer underneath it is the kind of lines that I like doing. And then in the very back, I actually used a piece of paper to get these very straight lines um, and this kind of grid pattern in the back. So I think it looks kind of cool all together. I did a video on this recently. This is a screenshot from the game Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This is probably the most detailed painting I've ever done with acrylic. And it took me, you know, several days of work to, to finish it. But yeah, that time lapse is up on the channel if you want to check it out. And... For the grand finale, the very last page, this is a self-portrait that I did. I'm going to try to show you the reference picture I took and this one side by side so you can see it. This picture basically encapsulates how I felt throughout this entire sketchbook. A little bit crazy. Uh, you know, I, I was on medication for part of the year. And I just wanted to finish the sketchbook with another self-portrait since that's what I did for the first one. And honestly, I love how this turned out. Um, I love the color scheme. I love the zombie hand I gave myself. And this is with um, alcohol markers. So that's basically it. That's the whole sketchbook. Um, here's my table of contents. Here's the first page. And then I got the back side too. So there's all the other pieces. And yeah. So that's the whole thing.
Well, I hope you like this sketchbook tour. Um, it's super satisfying to have another one of these puppies done. And I'll see you in the next video. Alright, thanks for watching.